and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I am going to be making a little bit of a twist on the bay window card. So I'm starting with a 5x7 card blank and I found the um, center point of that front panel which is at two and a half and then I just scored an eighth of an inch on either side of that. So basically I scored at two and three eighths and two and five eighths. I also have a strip here that I've cut to one inch wide by seven inches um, high. And I've just got some pattern paper that I've cut to the same dimension. So one by seven. <clears throat> and then this little strip here is uh, cut to a quarter of an inch by seven inches. And that's going in that little center section there. So you can see the bay window, that front section is um, not very wide at all. Normally on a bay window, that would be um, quite, a, quite a bit wider. Um, usually wide enough to put your focal image. Um, and then again, from some lovely pattern paper, this is from TLC Designs, it's called Classic Santa. I'm cutting um, some strips that are two um, quarters, two and one quarter inch wide by six and seven eighths um, tall. So there, it's going to be a very, very fine margin of white card base that you'll be able to see around those two panels. So now let's start to put everything together. So um, I've got this piece here, one inch wide by seven inches high. I'm going to put some low profile foam. So this is only one millimeter high. And this is going to act as a stopper so that when our card is open and kind of, you know, put on display that it holds that sort of um, angle uh, of the bay window. And then this is the little strip that's a quarter inch wide by seven inches high. And that's going right in that center um, panel there. And I'll glue this piece, our stopper, to the inside right edge of the card base. And I was careful when I put my foam adhesive to not put that foam all the way to the left edge. I, I wanted to leave some room so that the front panel, when it's tucked in behind this easel, um, has a has some place to kind of, has some room to kind of slide in under that uh, stopper. And then I've got our decorative panels that are on either side of the middle strip. And so again, these are cut to um, two and a quarter by six and seven eighths. So it's going to leave a very, very thin white uh, border all the way around. I wanted to have a little bit of a white border because when you're butting up pattern paper against a folded edge, um, it can be a challenge to uh, have it so closely butt up that you don't see any white at all. So I'd rather that white be that white border be intentional and and have it um, all the way around uh, the all four sides of that pattern paper. So now I'm going to do some fun um, masking with my stamping. So I took one of the rectangular dies uh, from the um, uh, Celebrate Frame die set here and I just traced the inner um, edge and that's going to give me a boundary line so that I know um, more or less what's going to be visible once I die cut this panel out. 
I've already stamped one of the girls from the Holiday Fun stamp set, and I stamped her a second time, but onto some repositionable Avery labels, which I'm using as masking paper. The Avery labels are really inexpensive, so... Um, I mean, a, a lot does come in, in a pack, so it'll last you a really good long time, but I find it more affordable than buying, um, a product that really functions the same, but is marketed as masking paper. Um, so the, the Avery labels work great. And with the key to stamping, um, a flat scene using masking is that you want to stamp from in the order of the foreground so what's closest to you moving backwards and so um the girl here she's going to be the closest to the viewer and she's going to be holding this ornament and so i stamped i masked part of her hand off so that when you stamp this it doesn't look like it does right now where the ornament looks like it's on top of her hand or in front of her hand. Um, and and once you peel off the mask, it's going to be super satisfying to see your scene revealed. But because more images are going to be stamped behind the ornament, I need to mask off the ornament as well. So I've gone ahead and done that. And now I can position my Christmas tree so that it looks like she's about to place the ornament onto the tree and because parts of her body will be blocking the tree um, it'll be very clear that she's standing in front of the tree and then I want to add a second girl to the scene so I wanted to quickly make sure that wherever I put the tree there's still going to be enough room to stamp my second girl and still stay within the boundary line that I traced out using my die so these stamps are photopolymer and this is my first time using them and for the most part they stamped perfectly and the only reason why um, I'm having to do this particular one multiple times is because um, it is stamping over some of the um, some areas that have been masked off so there's kind of different levels of paper that the stamp needs to kind of contend with. Um, normally you would be stamping on perfectly flat um, level surface. But while um, after I stamped it, I just took a second second generation stamping onto again some of my uh, Avery repositionable label, which I'm using as a um, my masking paper. And I don't have to necessarily fussy cut this entire tree out because I know the only, um, area that the second girl might overlap with the tree is on the left side. So that's really all I've fussy cut out is that left side because we want to make sure that the left side of the tree or any portion of the tree that, that needs to be covering or blocking the girl because it's in front of the girl, um, that we don't stamp over top of it with uh, when we stamp out the girl. So that's why I didn't even bother uh, fussy cutting out like the bottom portion of the tree and the right portion of the tree. And so here I'm positioning my girl, picking it up with my um, uh, stamp platform tool and stamping her. And again, um, I'm only needing to stamp twice because uh, like you could tell most of this was actually pretty okay um, to, to color in with, but the parts that are kind of nearest to the label, because it's contending with that, that extra, that little bit of extra thickness, and these labels are thin, but it's enough that it's creating a, um, a little bit of extra dimension, and so you just have to push down a little bit firmer on the stamp that's nearest to that. But here's the the really um, satisfying part of masking is when you peel off your masks and your scene is revealed and it's nice, it's perfectly flat, it, it all looks um, just as if somebody had drawn it that way. 
And so it's a technique that I don't do often, but I always, I always love the result um, when I do it right. <laughs> and, and the key really to doing it right is to just make sure that you're stamping in the order of what's closest to you and then working your way back and masking as you go. And that's really the only the only trick. And so you could do you could add a lot. So the holiday fun stamp set also includes some fun um, holiday hats. So I could have um, added the hat, a Santa hat and an elf hat to uh, these girls. And in that case, you would do the hat first because the hat needs to block parts of the head. So you would do the hat first then the girl, um, and, and that would be the, the order for that. So a lot of fun. Um, I stamped the girls with a hybrid ink, um, from Graphic 45 and, um, with the sentiment I'm stamping that with Versafine. And that's because I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure yet when I started stamping this out, what, what medium I wanted to color these girls in with and so if that's ever the case for you a hybrid ink pad is fantastic because you can use either your alcohol markers or a water-based marker and those lines will not bleed on you so now that I have my sentiment stamped out my scene sent stamped out I am going to go ahead and die cut out this panel using the one of the inner rectangle, rounded uh, corner rectangle die from the Celebrate Frame die set, um, which is fantastic because you get the decorative frames, but then you also get some plain um, edged uh, dies as well, both a rectangular one and an oval one. So this die set has a lot of versatility. Then I wanted a little bit of a border around, so I... I um, cut from my trimmer a um, green panel that is, um, I think about a quarter of an inch or so uh, larger than my um, die cut panel. And I just use my corner punch to round the edges on that. I did off screen do all of the coloring um, just to save a little bit of time in this video. But the reason why I made my bay window um, so thin in that in that center area there is because I actually want to attach this panel to just that little thin strip and it's going to look like it's um kind of floating a little bit on on either edge um so it's just a different look so instead of making a super wide uh center panel on my bay window and attaching this flat when you actually open this up, um, those uh, two side panels will fold back. And so that center panel, I feel like has a little bit more, it just pops a little bit more off of the card. So here's how it looks from the top. And, um, and it's just lovely card to put on display. And for Christmas cards, it's really great to create some of these fast, easy fun folds that are just meant to get placed uh, on display on a mantle. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed this card. If you did, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you want to catch new videos as I post them, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing the notification bell. Thanks so much. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.